Hello, I'm Annie Davy. Another story from Genesis this morning. Let's go through the actions again, shall we? Just to remind us of the story so far. Creation, fall, flood, tower, the nations scatter, 4,000 years. Abraham, the friend of God, and descendants like stars. One more time. Creation, fall, flood, tower, the nations scatter, 4,000 years, Abraham, the friend of God, and descendants like stars. And one of those descendants was this person here. He was called Joseph. Should we read it together? Joseph. Joseph, I'm afraid to say, was a spoilt brat. His father thought he was wonderful but he had lots of brothers. Let's have a look how many brothers he had. He had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a little brother, Benjamin. Eleven brothers, my goodness. And the trouble was that he was his father's favorite and his father brought him a most amazing coat. Here he is in his Technicolor dream coat. You've probably heard of that musical, haven't you? And he was a real show off and they hated him. He had a dream, two dreams, and in these dreams, his brothers were all bowing down to him. Well, you can imagine how they liked that. In one of them, he said that they were like 11 stars and he was in the middle. And they were filled with this horrible word here. They were filled with, with hate. And one day, well away from where Jacob, their dad was, they saw him coming and they thought, now's our chance. So they grabbed him, they took off his beautiful coat and they dropped him down a dry well and they were going to kill him. When in the distance they saw a group of traders coming and they thought, actually, we could sell him, we could do with some extra pocket money. Let's do that. So they ruined his coat, they grabbed him and they sold him to the, the traders and he was taken off to Egypt where he became a slave. The traders sold him to the captain of Pharaoh's guard who was a man called Potiphar. And Joseph had gone from being the most important person in the family to being a slave. But he worked really hard and he realised all the time that this was true. We read that together. God was with him no matter what happened. He worked so hard that Potiphar was so pleased with him he put him in charge of the whole household. But Potiphar's wife was an absolute shocker and she would not leave Joseph alone. He wouldn't have anything to do with her. She got so cross about it in the end she had him thrown into jail. She told a lot of lies. But he made friends in prison, and one of the friends he made had been the cup bearer, the wine server to the Pharaoh. And this man had a dream one day and he said, I don't know what to think of this. He said, I had three bunches of grapes and I squeezed them into the Pharaoh's cup and, he, and I served it to him. And Joseph said, God's told me that in three days time, you're gonna be set free and you'll be serving wine to the Pharaoh again. And it happened like that. And before he went, Joseph said to him, remember me, won't you get me out of here? But he didn't remember him. But a while later, Pharaoh had a couple of strange dreams and it really worried him. He thought, who can tell me the answer to these dreams? I'm really worried, I can't sleep for them now. And the wine bearer remembered Joseph. So they sent for him, they got him out of jail, cleaned him up, brought him to the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh said, hmm, they tell me that you can interpret dreams. And Joseph said, well, sire, I'll do my best. God will tell me what the answer is. What was the dream? So the Pharaoh told him his two dreams. The second dream was about cows. And seven big fat cows. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then up out of the river came seven skinny ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the skinny cows ate up the fat cows. And they didn't get any fatter. And so Joseph thought about this and he said, hmm, what's going to happen, sire, is that there's going to be seven years of plenty when the land is going to produce wonderful crops. 
but then there are going to be seven years when there isn't going to be any food at all. The crops will fail. So what you need to do, sir, with respect, is to appoint a governor who's going to make provision by saving stuff during the seven good years so that during the seven years when there's no food, when there's a famine, there'll be enough to feed the people. Excellent, said the pharaoh. You be that man. You seem to understand all about this. Wow. So suddenly, here was Joseph, dressed like an Egyptian, in a very powerful place, he built storehouses in all the major cities. He made all the people bring some of their produce every year to the storehouses so that there would be plenty of food during the famine. But Joseph's brothers back in the land of Canaan were getting hungry. And eventually their father, Jacob, who'd been called Israel by now, said, boys, you're going to have to go to Egypt and buy some food for us. I'll give you the silver, but otherwise we're going to starve. So they all set off for Egypt. And when they got there, Joseph heard them. He thought, that's my brothers, but he didn't let on who he was. He wanted to see if they had changed. Joseph said to his servants, put my special cup into the sack of the youngest brother. And then when they get to the edge of the town, stop them and search the sacks. So that's what they did. And of course, the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. And he was horrified. I didn't touch it, I didn't take it, honestly I didn't. And they said, Benjamin, you idiot, you've got it into terrible trouble now. And Joseph came along and he said, huh, right, this young man will have to stay here and be my slave. The rest of you can go, go home. And they said, oh no, sir, we can't do that. Please, one of us will stay. Please keep one of us, but, but please don't make Benjamin stay. It'll kill his father, he loves him so much, he's all he's got left. Oh, please don't do that. So Joseph knew that they had, they had changed and he was so amazed. He was filled with this word here. He was filled with love for them. And this is what he decided to do. He decided to forgive them. And he said to them, listen, I am Joseph, I'm your brother. And they were a bit scared. They thought he might want to get his own back for what they'd done to him. He said, don't be afraid. He said, it's just wonderful to see you. What you intended for evil, God intended for good. Now I can rescue you, your whole family. Go home, get our dad, take carts with you, bring the whole family back. Because the Pharaoh has said you can live in Northern Egypt where there's plenty of grass for the cattle and you can be settled there and I will look after you. Because now he was a, he was the ruler. So let's put some more actions onto here, shall we? Let's do three more actions. Let's have one because he was a... He was a dreamer. And one because he was a... Prisoner and ruler. So let's do from the beginning, shall we? Creation, fall, flood, Tower, the nations scatter. 4,000 years, Abraham, the friend of God, descendants like stars, and one of them was Joseph. Joseph the dreamer, Joseph the prisoner, Joseph the ruler. Now I'd like to say a prayer for you. You don't have to join in if you don't want to. Thank you that the Bible promises that you, Lord God, are with us always, in good times and in bad. Amen. <laughs>